Automatrix M-Track theft recovery operation. It's Saturday the 7th of December 2019. We've just taken a call from a hire car company advising us they've had a Mercedes S350 stolen uh, through a keyless theft uh, Friday night 11 p.m. where the hire of the vehicle said he saw three males with a computer scanning the keys um, and then uh, obviously they've taken the car and driven it off. Uh, it's now seven o'clock in the morning. We took the call about 40 minutes ago at the office. Now we have got a GPS and that's reporting uh, uh, on the main A1036 Raynham and it's behind like a car washing area. There's a garage, looks like a garage attached to a car wash system and it looks to be in the building. So it looks like they could be trying to strip this vehicle down. So we do need to get there quickly as possible. Raynham is attached to the Metropolitan or Essex Police, it depends on the location and I've been advised that this area is actually under the Met Police for some support. Hopefully we can get to this vehicle before it gets stripped too far, with a bit of luck everything's going to be fine. We've sent our radio finder from London, Danny, to that location and he actually turned up about five minutes ago, ten minutes ago. Can't see anything on site at the moment but there is a, uh, there's like a garage at the back of this car wash area and um, he, he said there's a light on in one of the garages. So um, we're just waiting for the RF to be picked up. Uh, we're just gonna initiate the RF, confirm that the RF is uh, active. And as long as the RF's active and we've got the vehicle there, everything looks good, we're gonna call the police. It's a Metropolitan Police uh, location, get them to attend site, because um, clearly this is gonna be inside this unit. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. We're going up to sort of back up just in case anything happens. So we're on route, maybe we'll actually catch some uh, video up there as well with a bit of luck. Uh, maybe we'll even get some arrests. So we're on the A3, we've got 71 miles to go to that location, so about an hour and 20 minutes or so. Um, and it just depends how busy the police are really on, on, on how this goes. Trucker is connected now, um, showing a mast off the A13 in Raynham. So I'm just going to go and try and get a GPS. Can you, can you resend the frequency in the high amplitude? Okay, I've spoken to Danny on site here at Raynham. Um, he's, he said he can see a light on in uh, one of these garages and um, at the car wash, the car wash people have started to turn up on site. So uh, I've checked that he's out of the way uh, and he is. So I've, we've got the RF now beacon confirmed as well at the system. So that means we can now call the Met Police and try and get them there as soon as possible um, before this car is taken a bit in this garage. I'm not sure what's going to happen in terms of the next 20 minutes, so pretty exciting stuff. We're keeping in touch with Danny on site, we're doing all we can do and um, yeah, hopefully we'll have the vehicle out of there without too much damage. In the yard, but to get into the yard, it's got two big gates and everything. We've just gone around the other side of the yard with the police officers and the beacon's going clappers and it's showing me like it's in the middle, you know, a back of a yard. All right, br yeah. brilliant mate, brilliant. I'll be there in half hour, all right? All right, but there's not a lot we can do, I don't think, because we won't be able to do it, get into the unit. You won't be able to get in the unit? No, they won't be able to get us in. The uh, police officers are saying that we need a warrant uh, to get in, to get to the back of the unit. I mean, if we could get into the scaffolding yard and look over, that would be ideal. But I, don't, I think the scaffolding yard won't be here today. But you can hear the beacon, listen now. We're walking around. Stay there. Yeah, but normally normally the beacon is enough for them to, they can ring their sergeant, yeah? And yeah. They, and they, what, if he rings his sergeant and says, look, we've got the guy on site, we've got the RF beacon, you know, we've got to go, the car's suspected being stripped at the moment. Yeah. If, if we wait another five hours, four out, three hours, could right. could, could be the cars all in fucking bits and the, and the people have scarpered. So what, are you round the back of that silver light unit? Yeah, yeah. Because the GPS was coming from inside that unit. There's five buildings at the front and there's five buildings behind, the officer's just telling me. So we've got a bit of a problem. 
which one he's seen at the moment. Yeah, well, so what's your what's your ETA here? Uh, twenty five minutes. Twenty five minutes. Okay, right. He just said about getting the warrants to get into the building. Well, he, he, can, he can instigate that, of course he can, straight away, but it may, it may be that he gets permission from his sergeant to go in just on the basis right. that we've confirmed it's definitely in garage number three or something. We can do All that. Right. Well, I'll have a quick word with him. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah, yeah, yeah. With that radio kit that we've got there, it's very, very accurate. So once we, um, we can go around the perimeter of the building, we can confirm 100% it's inside a building. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No, we've, um, we've, we've done a complete walk of the uh, only available areas around the building we can go to. We've, we're at the front now, and we've gone down the right-hand side to an adjoining unit. Um, yeah. We've gone as far as we can go, and I'm not denying that the, um, the strength of the signal, I can hear it. Yeah. The only issue we've got, we've got five different separate units where we're getting a signal, and then there is a left-hand huge gate, and um, in the back of it, there is three companies with different outhouses and buildings where this vehicle can be and there's no possible way to get down there. We, would, we wouldn't get a warrant to get through the first gate and then we still don't know where this vehicle may be because there's about potentially six different warehouses that we can't get to where it could be. What we should be able to do is with that art, we can walk to each door and it'll, it'll, it'll stop bleeping, you know, it'll only bleep at the right door. So we can turn the, turn the instrument down and we can just adjust it so we can tell you it's behind this door. Yeah? Right, okay. I mean, he's walking up and down and he can't tell me which door at the moment. No, uh, all right, well, I'll, if you put me back onto him, I'll have a word and try and get him to, all yeah, right. all right. Right, all right. Just come in. It's definitely behind this door. Yeah, that's what you've got to prove to him. You've just got to prove to him, you say, look, yeah. there's no signal there, it's behind the door, and then he can yeah. get his warrant, all right? All right, all right. Try, try and keep that officer there until I get there at least. All right, mate. Don't yeah, let him go. You're right. You're right. Cheers, right, mate. Bye-bye, mate. Police officers are saying they want a warrant. And if he's got the strongest signal by the door, you know, what do they need a warrant for? I can't see the point of that. Um, really playing it by the book. Do they want to catch some criminals or what? You know, come on. Get in there. I don't understand it. But, you know, I'm 11 miles from that location. And uh, yeah, definitely we'll be able to find it. Um, just talking Danny through there, and he's, he's he's identified it's in that unit, so that's good. That means the tracker hasn't been thrown out. It's not in behind the unit, so we're definitely going to find the tracker. I just I'm just a bit worried about how much work they've done to strip this vehicle. Um, it'd be brilliant if we can go in and the vehicle's all completely in one piece. That'd be absolutely fantastic, and we may even find something else there. So. Oh dear, 10 minutes, let's see. Have they driven off in their cars, have they? Yeah, yeah, they got a call. They said, look, the sergeant has told them to leave site to go off and do another job. But they're going, they're going up and down this road. They will keep an eye on it. I said, look, give him, he said, I can't, I've got to go. But I literally, I've gone to the door, I've done everything. And when you get to the broken glass, it's picking up. She said, I can see where you're coming from, but she said, we can't do nothing. Fuck our hands hell. are tied. Like I can't, they can't do nothing. No. So they've gone, they've gone off on another call now. The police have gone off on another call. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, literally, I got up on the, uh, on the motor uh, and went round. Um, you see where I went up? I'll show you when you get here. I went up on the roof of the, of the fucking motor and it picked up. The, the, you know, you can pick it up with no problems at all. Well, right. there's, there's a... Right, I'm just coming just, now. I, I can see you on the phone. Yeah. Park there, park there. Is this out of the way, is it? Yeah, yeah, just park there, or park down here. Yeah, park here. Okay. Okay. When I do that, I've been on the roof. I actually jumped on the roof. Okay. We'll go back down to that door again. I'll just see, you've left it on the current setting, yeah? No, I ain't touched it. Because they, they haven't said they're going to get a warrant. No, no they just said we'll no. keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the So the police have been here. Um, Danny was here, and he's shown them that the signal's coming from inside this building. Three garages here, four, five, six, and this big metal fence here. Um, and that has got a lock on it, I believe. 
Yeah. There's a big lock on it there. Through here, there's there's obviously a couple of shipping containers uh, and some other stuff around the back, and another fence. So, and that's got another lock on it. So, we've got every man on his uncle trying to put pressure on the Met Police, but obviously they've been here once and uh, left. So, um, we're just trying to use our influence to get get them back again. Uh, okay, so uh, we're just over the road now. This is the car wash area, and. Um, there's five units there. You can see the roller doors. And the one on the left-hand side there, underneath the silver of Silver Line, that's coming up with a, the strongest RF signal around the back of that building. We've been in unit two, which is the one with the roller door up underneath the uh, line signage. Um, and we've now got the strongest signal around the back of there. And there's a side door. You can't quite see it from here. You know, all sorts of vehicles around here. But, you know, there are some legitimate businesses here. When I got to site, the police had left. Um, the reason they left, their sergeant had deployed them to some other call um, as the, they, they weren't sure which of the buildings out of the five units here the, the, the tracker RF signal was emanating from. I asked them to wait a couple of minutes and I would have confirmed Danny was virtually there with it anyway, but they left. So what's happened now is I've managed to go into unit two because they've opened it up uh, chaps let us in there which is great and we've we've checked with the RF in unit two we didn't film that but basically in the back of unit two we've got the strongest RF signal um, and we've also been in unit five which is right on the end and we've ruled that out so we've got unit one uh, unit three and unit four um, and from what we can what we can see from the RF signal and also what um, unit two uh, chap in unit two saying is that unit one, which has got the side access, uh, which we've seen on the video, is uh, has got access around the back of, of these units. And we believe this car is around the back of unit one stroke unit two, which is all area uh, under the control of unit one, whoever's in unit one. So um, we've pulled a few more calls in and we've managed to get the hire company back on board as well, um, put some pressure on the police and the, the police are gonna come back now because we've told them it's unit one or around the back of unit one. So we've clearly identified they can use um, section 17 under PACE to actually uh, go in there without a warrant. That's what we're gonna hope for um, if the police uh, are up, to, up for it. So we're now waiting for the police for a second time. Um, no vehicles come out of that area. We're, we're checking to make sure this black S350 is not, not coming out. We've still got the signal here. So yeah, waiting for the police. Right, looks like the police are turning up now. Right, so we're going with the police now. I'll just show you the layout. So you can see the length of this building. It's quite, yeah. quite long and that's why it's got a forward and a back section. And this is where we're at. This, this is where we're having problems. Um, you can see there's another gate there. There's some shipping yeah. containers as well. An outbuilding as well. This is an eight, it's on an eight. They've got dogs in there, you know that. No, they've got dogs in the unit next door. Are they? Okay, the, the police are going to go and check uh, Raynham Steel around the back. There's a big crane and uh, they're going to try and get up on the back of that big crane to look over the back of this unit. They've also requested a uh, helicopter support to go and look over the back of this unit. Uh, we're not allowed to take the drone up. They seem a lot more proactive, these police that have turned up here now. We've also had a lot of help from the locals here. They've been very helpful. We still could be on for a win here. We're uh, just watching out for a helicopter to come over and check around the back here. Um, the police want a visual. They're still after a visual. Even though we've got the RF signal clearly coming from the back of Unit 1, they want a visual, so they requested a helicopter and that should be attending and they're going to look over the back of this unit with a helicopter with the zoom camera. There it is, there's a helicopter. You can see the containers. No, no. <laughs> no, but adjacent to the containers. That's where we think it is. Right, 
On the vehicle, on the aircraft. Yeah, all was safe. Thank you. Couldn't see anything obvious. No. Yeah, they've sent the, hel the helicopter out to go away at an operational fault, but it's come back. Um, we have got two shipping containers in the back, so if they if they can't see anything in that yard over this fence, I mean it's good that they've sent the copter, but we just need. Now you'd think that would be more hassle than a warrant, wouldn't it? Are the police, are the police coming? Yeah, they're on their way around here, just looking at another um, Mercedes yeah. uh, around now. All right, and well. then we're getting a warrant as well to get into that building at the back. Thanks, Dan. Cheers, right, mate. No mm -hmm. What's your uh, company name? Our company? Yeah. Automatrix Limited. Automatrix? Yeah, yeah, we're secured by design. Oh, lovely. So it's police, um, police approved system. Yeah, Automatrix. Or yeah, they hired it. Yeah. They've stolen from their client. So it just didn't go back? No. No, no it was stolen oh. from the client. Oh, okay. And he reported, the client reported oh, it stolen. Yeah. We're going to get some video yeah. footage of that. It was, um... We've got the warrant. So we've got... Three police cars outside. Three police cars in attendance now, a lot more turning up. And uh, the helicopter's gone, so we're creating a bit of interest. So we're still waiting for the warrant. It's coming up to three o'clock. That's three hours that we've been waiting for this warrant. They reckon they haven't been able to get hold of the magistrate, although I thought they had been able to get hold of the magistrate. So two police cars in attendance still, still waiting for the warrant. Let's hope they get it before it gets dark. They're just going to change shift a couple of the drivers. OK, so it's 7.30 at night now. I'm travelling back from Raynham. And... Uh, well, where do I start really? Um, police were waiting for the warrant. Came back and said, sorry, we can't get the warrant. What does that mean? We can't get the car back. So, you know, we got the signal in the corner of the yard there. We know exactly where the car's hidden. They said they can't, they can't get a warrant. Uh, their reasoning for not being able to get a warrant was that there was intelligence on that area that was classified or above our knowledge. And um, that meant they couldn't, issue a warrant. Now that what that can mean is that maybe there's a police investigation already underway and it involves that yard where we were, where the stolen car was taken to and if the police go in they could break open a case that's already been with the police for a number of months or years that they're trying to trying to solve and if the local police go in on a, on a stolen car they could upset all the all the hard work that's been done by the police officers so um, that's what we were told, that there's, there's an in, uh, intel on the property that forbids the warrant um, allowing us to go in. So basically I said to them, where, where does that leave us now? And they said, well, maybe we'll have, uh, we will be able to go as long as we've got more resource. Don't know what that means. There was four officers there, but they wanted more officers than four officers. So, so if the motion alarm goes off, we'll be able to um, inform the police that the motion alarm's going off. That could mean, if it stays in the same location, that could mean they're chopping the car up. And if they send police to that location, jump over one of the fences, avoid the guard dog, you know, they take safety measures, whatever. Uh, go in with five, six, seven officers, maybe an armed response team they can get some arrest. We could have hung around, but I'm going to travel back to Southampton. But Dan, Danny can get there or another finder can get there within 45 minutes or an hour. We probably don't need to the RF. We know where it is and we can guide them over the fun. So um, although we'd like to be there for the big reveal, we don't think that's going to happen. So it's going to be a situation where they either chop this car up and we have to sacrifice it for the sake of a police operation that's more important but a £70,000 car and our customer hopefully will get compensated some way for that um, disappointing as is obviously been on the phone to the customer and they're so so, so aggrieved by all of this really I don't know what the right word is so I can't you know say they're 
not angry, but frustrated about what's happened today, 12 hours. We didn't have to wait long for the police, but the, the police left, the first lot of police left, you know, saying we can't do nothing. And then we managed to get them back. When I arrived at the site, we gave, you know, made a few more phone calls, got them back, and they seemed a lot more helpful, actually. Those second lot of officers, and they did actually tell us that the first lot of officers were out of order for leaving in the first place. The second officers were on site for three, four hours, waiting for a magistrate to sign a warrant, and then the warrant was refused. Never happened before, 12 years. Never had a situation where We've got the car signal coming out of a building and the police haven't gone and got it, you know. Well, I don't know what to say. It's just, it must be, must be that there's a, a more important police operation which they don't want to spoil for the sake of, you know, just getting this one car back for our customer, but that doesn't help our customer. Anyway, so this, this is the video. Um, we haven't got the car at this point. Um, we're still hopeful that maybe we, we get the car, who knows. I'm hoping that they think it's a hot potato, they just want to get a shot of it, and park it up somewhere and we get the car back tonight, you know. So there may be a part two to this video, or it may be, you know, that we don't do a post up a part two. But as far as we're concerned, we found the car, customer's happy with us, car's in that building, 100% guaranteed, police pathetic really just useless just don't know what to say okay so just an update on what happened next in this case uh, we continue to work with our client to request police to ascend site on the sunday but without success no police turned up on the sunday so early morning uh, on the monday danny returned to the site with two representatives of the clients to gain access to the rear of the main building they got access through the side gate that we featured earlier. It was opened by some workers early in the morning and once it was open, then obviously Danny and the client representatives could walk through. So then Danny got through to the back and he used his RF direction receiver to check all of the rear buildings at the back of that big unit. Uh, he could then accurately pinpoint exactly which unit the uh, signal was emanating from the Automatrix M track and it pointed towards a metal roller door. Police are contacted with an update and asked to attend site at that point. And after an hour or two, the police did eventually turn up and uh, got in contact with the landlord of that actual unit. And when he got in contact with the landlord, the landlord agreed to give them access and to force an opening on that building. Hi Rich, we're with the police at the moment. The police turned up and were literally going to try and get into this unit here with the steel door. There's no dogs in the yard as you can see. Uh, we've got Range Rover doors here parked up and we're going round and round and round and if we just walk over here we've got the roof of the Mercedes GLS. At the moment we're all waiting for the keys to turn up. Right, we're here now, drilling the door out to get in. The police have buggered off again. Right, we're in the unit. We've accessed the unit. We've actually got the shutters up and the vehicle is in here. It's got the seats in the back and everything else. We've got the engine still in here. They have stripped it out. It's all here. Dashboard. Steering wheel. All the, all the doors are here still. That's a spare wheel. Yeah, it? spare wheel. All the covers, all the uh, tanks here. It looks like all the wheels are gone though. We still got the engine still. Yeah. Something, I suppose. Covered? No, you have to now, because it's got to be with Frendix. And this just needs tapping in. I'm just going to swing around 
there's all the stuff now coming out. So we're just going to walk back in. Got a bit more light on the subject now. There's the workshop from the back to the front and everything else. There's the inside of the vehicle. Right, the police have just left me saying they don't want the vehicle, they don't do no sendix on it, and they've left me here on my own. They said just get the uh, recovery truck to take it away with no support from the police officers at all. They just couldn't be bothered. The car had clearly been dismantled. Most of the bolt-on bits were removed, but they were all together. They All the parts were there except for four wheels, which were missing from that actual garage unit. Uh, the police rejected the opportunity of a forensic examination and uh, then they left site, uh, which was we weren't expecting. We thought they'd stay there all the time. Um, so they just left Danny in that situation on the Monday. Uh, we were very disappointed about that. And we advised Danny that if that was a situation he was on his own, he, had, he should lock himself in the car and block the exit while the recovery vehicle arrived. And that's what he did. And then when the recovery truck arrived, Danny used his ingenuity to come up with some contraptions and some skates to, to get this vehicle recovered onto the back of the recovery truck. Uh, so Automatrix dealt with the recovery of that uh, completely. It was quite awkward, like I say, but yeah, great thanks to Danny for going back, supporting Automatrix again with this recovery and disappointing that the police uh, had not supported in the way that we anticipated and no real concrete reason given for why that was so questions to be asked i think about the police performance but as far as we were concerned the customer cut their losses they sold that uh, particular vehicle off at an auction uh, all like i say all the parts were there so uh, their loss wasn't as bad as what it could have been so all in all not a bad job